Hello and welcome to IT Basics Part 2, part of the IT Basics Building Automation Monthly Series. We are going to be discussing several things in this video. I'm not going to have it in slide format, that way I can move back and forth between MS Paint and this actual presentation deck. In this video we will cover IP addressing. We will cover subnets, default gateways, routers, switches, device placement, and much more. No, seriously, we'll just cover this. But with that being said, we're going to go through this in a fair amount of detail because these are the fundamental knowledges, fundamental knowledge areas, I guess would be the better way to say it, that you need to have, not even being in IT, if you're in building automation, if you're in security, if you're in any sort of electronic device nowadays, you need to have this core information. So what is IP addressing? Well, we're assuming we're focused on IPv4. Because IPv4 consists of four octets, so eight bits. So if we were to look at this, what does a bit look like? Well, a bit would be anything, whether it's zero or one. So if I were to write this out for you, if we were to make it very simple, it would look like this. This is an octet. And let's make sure I got eight here, right? Okay, I do have eight. So each one of these octets corresponds with a number, and we're not going to get too deep into this. That would be into subnetting and things of that nature. Now, eventually you're going to memorize which these places are, what these correspond with. So the first one would be 128. So let's go down here. We're going to go one more down. 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. So if this is 1 up here, then that means that that value is present. If it's 0, that means that value isn't present. So if we were to read this, pretty simple to read, that would be 32. So that would be the first octet. Okay. So when we look here, at an IP address that has four octets, we're going to say that this has four sets of eight bits. And all those put together add up to an address. Now, there's much more to know. There's leading bits that you have to have turned off or turned on depending on the class. There's certain things like class D, which is a multicast. You've got class E, which is your experimental. But predominantly, the average person is going to encounter, and this is kind of interesting, the average person is going to actually encounter class C or class A. You don't run, I don't want to say you don't run into, because I'm going to get that one person who's going to say, well, I run into them all the time. On average, you're going to run into the private networks, the 10.0s, the 192.168s. Okay? Those are the typical ones you're going to run into, and they're in class A and class C. And why do I say that? Well, if you're in building automation, what you're going to run into, typically, let's go here. Let me draw something for you. I'm going to have a VLAN. And this VLAN is going to be given to me by an IT guy. And this IT guy is not going to go and say, you know what, Phil, I'm going to give you a public IP address. No, he's not going to spend a whole static public IP address on my device. What I'll typically get is a dynamic address that will be configured to the Mac so that whenever I log on, I automatically get that address. It's kind of like a static, except for it's not a static. I know. Sometimes you'll get statics if the IT guy is actually doing a good job because you really don't want the device that's turning on your chillers, turning on your air handlers, not to have a static. But he'll typically give me a private address. He'll say, all right, I want you to have 192.168, we're seeing our four octets here, 1.100, okay? So we're seeing here, 192 is the first octet, 168 is the second, 1, and then 100. Now, what we have here, we have host bits and we have network bits. These are going to be your network bits. Now, how do I know that? Well, you don't looking at this right here. I mean, you can make some assumptions if you've been in IT long enough. You'd figure, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is 
my network bits and these are my host bits but you don't know that unless you know the subnet mask now the subnet mask is typically going to either be in the same format here you know like 255 255 255 dot zero or maybe it's in its CIDR format or CDIR uh, anyways I always get my acronyms messed up what you're seeing here these are the network that this device resides on these are the hosts that could be on the network now with a dash 24 that means that I can have 1 through 254 because my first bit's going to be reserved for my subnet. So dot zero would be my subnet. And dot 255 is going to be my broadcast. That means all of these values right here can be assigned to a host. So what does this do for you? What is understanding this information? Well, it helps you understand about octets. And it helps you understand about classes and private addresses. We'll get more into that in the third video in this series because unpacking subnetting, unpacking pack private addresses is pretty robust. So look in here, so we see, as I just drew out on there, a typical class C address. So we see it's a dash 24, or 255, 255, 255 .0. It's networks.0, it's broadcast 255, it's range right there and it is a private address. Now how do I know that? Because any address 192.168.00 or whatever, just XX, right? That is going to be a private network. All right, so what are we looking at here? So we're gonna move next to subnets. We discussed the subnet right here. This is our subnetwork, okay? And a subnet then would look like this. Let's uh, go back to paint right here. Let me do a new. All right, so we look here. We've got this device, and here's the router, and then you've got this device over here. And let's say these are switches, okay? All right. I would draw the arrows for a switch, but anyways. And these are our devices. Okay, there's your computer. It's a laptop. Here's another computer. Okay? So everything right here, now we're not talking VLANs yet, we're not talking anything like that, but everything here essentially is on the same subnet. So let's say this is 192.168.2.x. The subnet is 2. All right, this is our network right here. Let's say this is a dash 24, so that means I can have 1 through 254. So I could have this be address 1, I could have the switch be address 2, I could have this interface right here be address 3. Okay, you see how this is kind of working? Now, over here, in this subnet, this is going to be the 192.168.1.x. And this could be address 100. This could be 101. This could be 102. Let's say this is a slash 24. So we can, once again, have 1 through 254. Now what has to happen, since this is its own network, it can send layer two messages, as we recall from our last video, MAC addresses, and it can communicate to anything in the subnetwork, as long as there's no VLAN set up. But to get over here, it's going to need a layer three message. It's going to need an IP address. So it's going to go through the router. The switch is going to capture it. It's going to say, hey, I know the MAC address of my router and you're asking for this IP address and I know that this IP address is to this MAC address so it forwards what's called a frame and that frame goes through the switch to the router and then that is going to go and get down the OSI model so the packet 
the frame's going to get taken off the packet, and so just the packet's going to remain because it's encapsulated. So you got your frame here, which has your MAC address. Okay, that's going to get taken off, and now you're going to go, and it's going to say, "Hey, well, how do I get to this IP address?" Well, I have a route, and it says to go out this port, and I know that I send it to here. It's going to go out my frame. It's going to go out, and it's going to get this frame. It's going to get this MAC address for this device. It's going to attach that to the packet, and it's going to send it there, and then it's going to work its way back up the OSI model, taking the frame off, stripping the packet, deciding whether it's TCP, UDP, and working all the way back up to the application layer. That's how IT is working. All right, so we went through several things just now. We went through IP addressing, went through subnets, we went through routers and switches. Now, default gateways. As you recall this video, this, uh, look at that background, there you go. This paint document right here, and let's clean it up. You had your router, and you had your switch, and you had your device, okay? So for your device to communicate outside its network, it needs a default gateway. Now that default gateway can be assigned via DNS, or sorry, DHCP is what I meant to say. I told you, acronyms are not my thing. So it can be assigned via DHCP, or it can be statically assigned. You can have redundant default gateways. For example, if you had like hot swappable routers, you had two routers here, and they're both here, and then this one was the lead, and if this one failed, it switched over to this one. This would still have the same default gateway in here, and it wouldn't be the wiser as it switched to the router. Now, that's redundancy you typically use for, like, WAN links. But anyways, you're coming through here. You go to your default gateway, and it should have the route to the network you're going to want to go to. If it doesn't, it typically will have, like, a default route, or it'll drop the packet. So, for example, default route would be 000, goes out port S1. So, anything it doesn't know, it's going to send out serial port 1. So, let's say the serial port 1, it's going to send that information out because it doesn't know where to send it. And then it goes on and goes router to router, and depending on your routing protocol, it may have time to live and die. It may be RIP where you've got a point count met or hop count metric. Just depends. But the point is, is your default gateway here, right? That is the key component. So if we were to look at your computer, if we were to look at open network and sharing, and we were to look at our adapter settings, we we're to go here into properties, I'm going to drag this over here. If I were to look here, my IP address would go here, my subnet mask, my default gateway would all go right here. Okay? So if you ever got to edit it, you can go right here under properties or the old fashioned way. You just go under command prompt. You type IP config. And there it is. It all just comes right in there. Now, if that's DHCP, that's address assignment. Basically, what's going to happen is you're going to have a DHCP server, dynamic host configuration protocol. And this is going to say, hey, I need an address. That DHCP server is going to say, hey, okay, and then it's going to go back and forth, and we're not going to get into the acknowledgments and the offer requests, things of that, and the deny if all the addresses are full, but it's going to go and say, okay, here you go, and it's going to say thank you. That's essentially how DHCP works, and DNS is going to say, okay, I need to get to google.com, and it's going to send this domain name to the server, and that server is going to say, here's the IP address for Google.com. Because if you don't have that IP address, you're not going to be able to go and communicate. Because remember, we've got to send an IP address to the router for it to be able to route. So if you're ever having like destination host unreachable, things of that nature, your DNS may be down, your router may not have a route, things like that. Or you may not have a default gateway set up. Those are three key things to be aware of. So today, we've went through quite a bit. Let me bring up the PowerPoint again here. Okay, we've went through IP addressing. We've went through subnets. 
went through default gateways, through routers and switches. Now we didn't go deep into switches, we didn't go deep into routers. And that's by design. We'll get into that a little bit later. That's something that if you want to know it, we can go through it. Now, key point here is that you understand these fundamentals. You understand the fundamentals about I addressing. You've got four octets, you've got five classes, you've got private addresses. You understand the fundamentals about routing. You understand the fundamentals about a default gateway, about DHCP, DNS. Now, when we move into our next video, it's going to be a little bit about IT security, how to ensure your systems are secure. And then we're going to dive a little bit deeper into some of the router and switcher, switching fundamentals. So thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Feel free to add your comments. Thank you.